Hello viewers, welcome once again to this tutorial on human geography. We will continue from where we left off in our last video. But before that, let's try and refresh our minds on what we did in our previous video. In our previous video, we looked at the definition of human geography and we distinguished between human and physical geography. We also looked into how the five geographic questions can be used in solving a human geography situation or studying a human geography situation and we looked at population. Today we'll be looking at the approaches into studying human geography. We'll be going into detail concerning the approaches. So at the end of this video we hope to be able to identify the methods of studying human geography, to be able to explain the methods identified, understand how they work, and differentiate between these methods. So what are the methods of studying human geography? There are two main approaches or two main methods, and these are the systematic approach and the regional approach. Systematic approach and regional approach. What is the systematic approach all about? So this systematic approach was introduced by a famous German geographer, Alexander von Humboldt. And this approach studies a particular issue or subject and its variations across the globe. It also deals with processes that operate in space and attempt to explain them under themes such as morphology, politics, economy, climate, among others. Organ it is organized in terms of a particular phenomena of general geographic significance. It studies a phenomena in terms of aerial differentiation. A study of specific natural or human phenomena that gives rise to certain spatial patterns and structures on the Earth's surface. It analyzes the structure, the feature, the distribution, characteristic, and change in a given feature of theme. Makes use of facts that belong to regional geography to make its own description. So in simple terms, when we talk about the systematic approach, is just looking at a particular issue or phenomena or event in geography in relation to places, different places across the globe. So it's more like a comparative study. So for instance, if you are studying climate, you are studying one issue, but you are looking at it from different spaces or different places. So there's the point here that says analyzes the structure, feature, distribution, characteristics, and change in a given feature or theme. So with our example that we stated earlier, climate. So for one region, it will look at the type of climate there. It will look at the climatic features over there, the distribution of rainfall, the temperature ranges, we look at the characteristics of the rainfall, what type of rainfall it is, whether it is relief rainfall, orographic and the likes. We look at the changes in rainfall over a period of time. So it looks at, it studies a particular phenomenon into detail or a, partic a particular phenomenon or feature into detail, comparing it with other regions. So let's say we are studying the rainfall or we are studying climate of Accra, climate and climate of Kumasi, or maybe the climate of Ghana. We are comparing it the place the different places in Ghana. Okay, let's quickly look at the branches in systematic geography or in the systematic approach that gives rise to systematic geography. So the branches we have physical geography under which we have climatology, geomorphology, biogeography, which includes environmental geography, pedology and hydrology. And by economic geography, we have agricultural geography, industrial geography, tourism geography, transportation geography. In some textbooks, you 
steel manufacturing geography then and the social geography which is more of human geography we have population geography medical geography political geography settlement geography historical or cultural geography and the final one is geographic techniques that has to do with qualitative and quantitative analysis cartography gis gps remote sensing and regional science so these are all branches in systematic geography because these can be studied on their own you can study them independently so like we stated earlier climatology you can study the climate of an area you want to look at the make of the area the geomorphology of an area you want to study the population of places different places so you can study one phenomenon that's why they all fall under the systematic and with the techniques we have qualitative quantitative cartography gis global positioning system that's a gps remote sensing regional science and all these follow a system they all follow a process scientific method it's very systematic that is why they all fall under the systematic geography okay a quick look at the systematic geography in the in a diagram form so when we look at the diagram here we see branches of geography based on systematic approach and here we have physical we have principles of philosophy we have methods and techniques and we have the human so like it was stated earlier just take some time to go through this diagram then we move on I believe we have familiarized ourselves with this diagram now. Now let's look at what regional approach is. So the regional approach on the other hand was introduced by Carl Ritter. This regional approach involves a holistic study of a region. When we talk about a holistic study, it means that we are studying something in a whole. We are studying different, different parts, but then we are studying them as they are interconnected with each other. So we don't study just an, a particular aspect of a region, but you're studying it, the region as a whole. Okay, so it also involves the analysis of all themes or characteristics in a region. It studies all features of a given region to understand its facts and contents, to be able to describe the region and understand it as an independent entity. Regions may either be based on a singular feature like relief, rainfall, vegetation, or multiple features. So this is simply explaining how we are able to come about with regions. You know, we can have regions like relief regions, we have climatic regions, vegetation regions. You can divide regions based on all these features. You can also have a region that will have a mixture of all these, that's the multiple features. You can also have a region that is determined by administration or what goes on there that's more like a functional region so for instance you can describe Accra as, a, as an administrative region because it has the capital city of Ghana yeah so regional approach of geography also has some sub branches and these are regional studies regional analysis regional development and regional planning so there's also a diagram here. I'd like us to just briefly look at it. Okay. Now let's not get confused between the regional and the systematic approaches. So let's look at the differences between these two. So with the systematic approach, it considers one theme or feature at a time, while the regional considers or synthesizes all themes or features of a region in its study. So like we mentioned, like we stated earlier, systematic approach will look at only population. 
but this time around is looking at it in comparison is doing it is comparing population or it is studying population of different places it's weighing the population of different places together but there's one particular feature that is being studied so everything about that feature it goes into detail we study the details of a particular feature or a theme but the original doesn't look at a particular feature so it doesn't really go into detail but it studies everything about a region all the themes so with the regional to study population, climate, settlement, everything about it. And there's not much detail there because it's studying or we're synthesizing all. But the systematic, on the other hand, goes, looks at the systems, goes into detail, breaks it down, and looks at what goes into each feature or each team. So the second difference is it's the systematic compares region, as explained earlier. And then the original deals with one region to so one region at a time. You are studying one region, but everything about that region. Systematic, you are studying one thing about different regions. The systematic approach also uses the nomothetic idea, while the regional approach uses the ideographic concept. So when we talk about so when we talk about nomothetic approach, it simply looks out for similarities between things, between people, between places. It just looks out for similarities and looks out for general things. But the ideographic, on the other hand, focuses on the individual aspects. It's always focuses on the unique things. So we are saying here that the regional approach uses the ideographic con concept so it looks at the individual or the the individual or the unique things of a region of a particular region but the, the systematic looks at the general things of every region what is common to every region i believe you've understood the differences very well and you will be able to explain it to anyone and also write better on it for more ideas or for more insight into this you can check out the following references thank you we shall meet in the next video if you like this video just subscribe click on the subscribe button to get more